I developed the ideal student athlete image that these kids should be showing on their social media feeds. So when someone Googles them and they scout down their social media feeds within that minute, you can find out what they value, who they're hanging out with, and what their future actions are gonna be. They're, I'm teaching them to put their best selves forward, which makes them look great, makes their athletics departments look great, and it makes their school communities respect the student athletes a little bit more because they're able to learn how to show their best selves online. So, this weekend I was actually at University of Oklahoma, I was at University of Arkansas, Langston University, University of Tulsa, and has anyone here ever heard of Last Chance U, a TV show on Netflix? Okay, so there's this Netflix TV show that detail, it, it's a reality TV show that goes over to a university that's known for, to take every single Division I screw up. And when I say that, I mean, you have all the best kids in the country who don't make grades, who make it ineligible, who may never even pass a clearinghouse. They go to these certain colleges. The college I just spoke to on Saturday is gonna be the host of season three of Last Chance U. So it was really cool. I was able to speak uh, to all the kids, about 40 of them already have Power Five, which is like the top 25 schools. They have those offers already. And I mean, my claim to fame is the guy who was speaking before me was Rick Ross. Does anyone know? Not the rapper, not the rapper. The <laughs> Freeway Rick Ross, one of the most infamous drug dealers in US history. They think he was credited to introducing crack cocaine to LA and into the Latino and African American communities. So we had some great conversations, right? We had some great conversations, especially how he's going back to fix those communities that he kind of shattered. So the, that, that's the type of conversation that we're having and we're trying to fix, we're trying to help the same type of people, which is people who need a little bit more guidance so they don't make the same mistakes that we did, or in my position, they are able to follow the blueprint that I have. So let's talk about social media and sports. Raise your hand if your athletics department has a Facebook account. All right, raise your hand if they have a Twitter account, uh, Instagram, Snapchat, just one right. Okay, so a lot of Twitter. I see about like 20% Twitter, is that about, is that correct? All right, so the reason why social media and sports moves faster than the rest of your school is because of the influencers, the people who are influential within your school community who you're posting about. Those of you with Twitter accounts, you guys are, sh what are you sharing? On your, on your Twitter. <coughs> I saw a lot of hands over here. Pictures. Pictures of games? Contests coming up or okay. uh, performances or things that are coming up. Baseline okay. impact tests, big contests coming up. Got it, like results and then just contest schedules. Uh, live updates. Live updates? Yeah. Cool. And you know who you're doing those live updates about? The athletes in your school. The people who get to wear that name of the jersey of your school on them. So those people are what I call influencers. And what an influencer is, is anyone who is influential. So for example, say you buy a new car. Your neighbors start talking to you and say, hey, that's a really nice car, how do you like it? Pretty soon, after a couple months, you see other people with your same car. You see some of your friends, some of your family members. You are an influencer with that vehicle because you're the one with the real life experience using it and you're the person that your friend trusts about their personal opinion. So these athletes, they're the ones who are being viewed by the rest of the people on campus as, oh, this person is very well known within us, even if they don't think about it. So when those athletes start doing like bad activities offline, there's other kids who are seeing it, they're judging it, and they might be doing the similar things. So if you take a group of your influencers, those are also people, usually the people with the biggest audiences on their social media feeds. I know some of the 17 year olds 17 year olds I work with, they have 45,000 followers on Instagram. That's a lot of people paying attention to them. And you know what? They are automatically influential within the sports field because they're known as athletes. But ultimately that's not all who they are. At the same time, if you have a Twitter account and your school has a Twitter account, your AD may have one as well, you're able to leverage those influencers and the audience that they have to promote your athletics department, to promote those other aspects of your school. That's why it moves faster. You have more people who are sharing it who have their own separate audiences. 
So we're gonna be talking about some of the highest impact apps right now. I'm gonna go over this a little bit quicker because I really wanna focus on the ways that your athletics departments can leverage social media right now easily, that it's gonna save you time in the long run. But before I go over some of the other ones, there's this new app that just came out, or it's, it's being used more frequently now in the last couple of months. It's called Sarah. So it's S-A-R-A-H-A-H. So, have you heard of that before? Yeah, just the other day. Yeah, all right. Ugh. Okay, yes. So when it was what it was created for, it was created for entry level employees to give their managers direct, honest, and anonymous feedback. <laughs> so how kids are using it now is they're using it, they're getting an account, they're putting a link into the, all of their social media profiles and they're texting all their friends. So all their friends are able to click on that link and say whatever they want to say anonymously about that person. These kids are inviting that type of energy into their lives. It could be positive, it could be very negative. Because ultimately, when anytime there's anonymity on social media and you're asking for someone's opinion, even if it's not their real opinion, they're gonna try to mess with you because these are 14 to 18 year olds. They don't know better yet. So that's still developing. That app uh, just started recently. Uh, I started seeing it more in the US and seeing more of the, you know, the ESPN top 100 athletes start using that in the last since in July. So I haven't seen anything negative about it yet, but anytime you have anonymity, there's gonna be bullying. So just keep an eye on that around your campuses. If you guys start looking at social media feeds or start seeing them and you start seeing that link, talk to those students. See what kind of, what kind of feedback they're getting. See if it's positive, negative, uh, because ultimately we care about their best interests. So who here has heard of Snapchat before? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, everyone just raise your hand. Like, come on. I know it's early in the morning, but all right, perfect. How do you think your students are using Snapchat? <laughs> they take silly faces and they put them on there. They take silly faces, yeah. <laughs> uh, right back here. I'm going to call on people with no hands on now. So, yeah, right here. Yeah. How do you think just to post pictures and everything? Okay, yeah, they post everything that they're doing. Uh, right here. Is that Rito? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely to uh, just keep everyone that's following them up to date up to their recent going from third or fourth period. Yeah. Having this <laughs> <laughs> They think everything they do is important and no one, right? Whether they're right or wrong, that's not for up to me to decide. So what, how, that's how kids are using it. What do they think about it? Um, I know one of the things I always hear is they think it's private, yeah. right? They think all of the pictures and posts go away. <laughs> they think that no one can record it. That's absolutely incorrect, as we all know. Snapchat is ultimately a business. So the API they have, the code that they have, allows access for a lot of inroads for other businesses to work with them, to get access to the information that they have. So I know my engineers, they created a program that can check out particular geolocations. So I could search this school, and they'll aggregate every single snap taken, personal or private, public, and then they would have it stored and I, I could look at all of them. Kids don't know that. You can check out certain areas and save every single snap taken, including the one-on-one -on -one direct messages. So all of a sudden, this is where all the kids are like, oh shoot, I should have sent that picture, right? I should have sent that video. All of a sudden, this random dude has it instead of my, my friend. So technically, I can't do that, but I can't search the one-on-one -on -one snaps, but you can search the geolocation snaps. But I don't tell the kids that. I make them believe that I have everything, right? But ultimately, all of their friends, they can screenshot whatever snap they're taking. There's a lot of apps out there that students can download on their cell phones that automatically pull in, automatically record every single snap that they get sent. That's without the other people knowing. So all of a sudden, if you send a picture of your junk, you have, you're giving access to this person who can send it out and replicate it to the whole world. That's a scary thing. That's how students are using it now. They're thinking that this is private and everything that they do is going to be in the dark. But as we know, everything that happens in the dark will come out to light. 
So a way to teach your student athletes about that is you guys need to have honest conversations with your coaches. And hopefully each coaching staff will have one younger person who can have this conversation with them. Kind of teaching them about the ramifications and the consequences of their actions. Because 14 to 18 year olds, they don't think years in advance. They think about the next five minutes. They, that lunch that they just ate or going from third to fourth period is the most exciting, happening thing in their life right now. So we need to teach them that it's not. And ultimately, even if it's not, that social media is not a place for them to emotionally vent and emotionally share what they're thinking at that moment. Instagram. Um, so actually, so Snapchat, I want to go back to that for one second. Snapchat, the, there's more and more app students going on there because you guys are not there. They're going there because they know that they're getting access to their friends and they're having a lot less oversight than on other social media accounts. The fact that, in, that Snapchat says it's private and it's personal, those kids believe it. Right? So there are third graders right now getting on Snapchat. There are third graders right now getting on Instagram. And as parents, as administrators, as coaches, as adults who are mentoring children, we can only guide them as much as we have time with them. So even when you have these conversations with your kids or your coaches to tell them to the kids, that's the little pond that we have access to. But when we give them Snapchat at an early age, we're giving them the whole ocean saying, hey, use your best judgment. <laughs> and these are kids who are like touching electric fences and stuff, right? Like we're telling them, use your best judgment. Um, so education has to continually happen, education. So Instagram. Instagram is where I think a lot of kids are going to go to more. Like they're already on there, and right now they're using them in different ways as adults are. Raise your hand if you're on Instagram personally. Keep your hand up if your profile is public. Okay. A lot less, right? It's probably yours is probably private. <laughs> I think I How do you yeah. know? Okay, so the reason I make that different attribute is because we understand, if you're on Instagram, you know what it is. It's a, it's a picture sharing and content sharing platform that is starting, to get, is starting to get different characteristics from the most popular social media accounts because it's owned by Facebook and they can. They want to be able to get everything every student, every person wants and get them addicted to it. We're on Instagram and if your profile is public, your kids have access to everything that you share. If your profile is private, you're on Instagram, I guarantee you they see you because they've searched for you, but you're not looking out in the community that you're in, right? You're keeping a closed eye, keeping away from the student athletes or the students in your school. Social media should really be used as a listening app, right? It's a listening, it's a listening tool for your athletics departments to be able to see what your student athletes think about you. It's not great to have conversations online, I never do with student athletes if there's an issue. But more importantly, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit later, you're able to candidly see what your student athletes are saying to each other. You're able to see in their minds, to see what they think about your program, or a particular coach, or the positive acts that they're doing on your campuses. So Instagram's big. Uh, it's starting to get these functions similar to Snapchat, where the posts that you create disappear immediately. And this is where I spend a lot of my time, because this is where my audience is. Because ultimately, you guys saw how many, sorry, y'all saw how many people raise your hand when you said, and I said, who's on Instagram? That means all of y'all aren't on it, because your friends aren't on it. So you're not going to invest more time learning about it. But all of their friends are on it. So this is where they're investing their time and their energy and their mental space. So it could be a positive thing for y'all to learn a little bit more. Twitter. Twitter is dying, but <laughs> Twitter, all right, so let me, let me uh, preface that. So Twitter is having a hard time making money as a company, but more and more student athletes are getting on it because that's where their friends are. That's where their coaches, that they, if they want to play college sports, whether it be volleyball, basketball, baseball, soccer, anything, they're going to be on Twitter because they're, those college coaches and recruiters are on Twitter. They're going to be on Twitter because that's where they can learn the information about the updates on their schools, on the, the schedules that they have. 
And also, that's where the reporters are. And if they're playing high school sports, they, I guarantee you they know who Get Sports Focus is. They follow Cal High Sports. They follow the daily news of wherever you're at and the reporters who are reporting on your school because that's what their lives are about. They, they really breathe sports when they're playing it. So they want to know who their competitors are. They want to know what these people are saying about them. Similarly to when I was playing in sports, I'm sure many of y'all were too, whenever a newspaper came out with a talk about your school, you always read it. Whenever your name was in there, you grabbed five copies, right? So this is a way, Twitter is a way where a lot of news information is shared. And that's why more and more student athletes are investing more time on it. Because the people they're interested in are there. Uh, so this is a great way to, and we're going to talk about this more, this is a great way for y'all's athletics departments to create those news. It's a great way for your, for your athletics department to share the information about your athletics department and the programs that you have within your schools. Because ultimately, if you don't want to get 25 emails a day asking for the same question, right? So once you start creating that content, creating those posts online and sharing the information, people are going to understand that if they want a certain type of info, they don't need to email you. They can just check the school's Twitter accounts. Facebook. There's no children on Facebook anymore. I know uh, when I, I coached football over at Menlo Atherton High School. And the first year we were there, 2015, we had a Facebook group with all 120 members of our program. There was a lot of the 13, 14 year olds who were getting in, who just got into high school. And we found that we were making them create a Facebook account just to be in our group. And that's making them use more of their time to be on another social media account that they don't have to be on, just to talk to us. So we stopped doing that because we really realized where our audience was and where we could find them, and it wasn't on Facebook. Do you guys want to know why they're not on Facebook? Their mom is. Because all y'all are on Facebook, that's why. <laughs> they don't want to talk to any of you guys, and you know what, I guarantee if they're on Facebook too, they're not sharing what they're really doing. They're posting what, they're like they're supposed to be talking to their grandma which ultimately that's what we want them to do on the rest of their social media accounts, but they're not gonna be doing it on Facebook. None of their friends are there. If none of your friends are up anywhere, you're not gonna hang out there either. But the people who are, raise your hand if you have a personal Facebook. I have one. All the parents are on Facebook. All of the boosters and the community members that you want to access, the ones that you want to get these grants, not grants, I was gonna say sponsorships because that's a thing, but sponsorships and donations from for your athletics department. They're all on Facebook. That could be a great way for you guys. It's you all, sorry, y'all. For y'all, I, I got used to talking to a lot of football <laughs> players this weekend. And so I'm just really glad that I have a smile on my